go. Hello everyone, my name is Amani, uh, a third year PhD student at the University of Strasbourg and Ephrata. And I'm excited to share with my work on uh, measuring quantitatively explainability models and the data analysis of chain, machine learning when detecting IoT cyber assets, which is uh, by Dr. Ramya. <laughs> So uh, know, we, we do are... not hear you very well. We do not hear you very well. There seems to be a problem in your connection. You can get on, but we need to be careful because we do not hear you so well. Okay, so you're hearing me or yeah, now it's good. Okay. So, as you all know, we are living in an age where technology is at the rapid and and we are trying to support the global that makes our lives easier and more connected than ever before. And the increasing use of IoT devices, there is also a rise right in the security risks associated with them. Uh, attackers can exploit vulnerabilities in IoT devices and use them to launch cyber attacks through data or for the other types of information. Machine learning plays a crucial role in detecting and preventing cyber attacks from IoT data. It has the ability to efficiently process and analyze large volumes of IoT data, and it can also ensure the security and the privacy of sensitive information. And it can also identify patterns in IoT. Data. Uh, an information theft cyber attack, specifically data exfiltration and decoding, unauthorized access to a remote service is given by exporting vulnerabilities in IoT devices. Keylogging involves uh, capturing keystrokes to gather sensitive information, while data exfiltration involves collecting and transmitting the sensitive data using alternative protocols. Uh, so, an indicator of keylogging includes a high number of uh, Inbound connection per source IP and the elevated average rate per protocol, while in data exfiltration is characterized by the substantial volume of transmitted packets from specific destination with unfamiliar source code. However, understanding these patterns and indicators is essential for family detection and effective response. So, explainability will play here a critical role in enhancing our understanding and gaining deeper insight into the detection process. So why do we need explainability? Now let's consider an information security analyst uh, who's employing machine learning to detect attacks. So when a uh, machine learning tool is an alert for unfamiliar attacks such as information and theft attack, the security team will face the challenge of understanding why the alert was triggered. A professional manager also will seek to identify specific features or patterns that the algorithm detected, whether they indicate data exfiltration or keylogging. And this feature could be related to transmitted packets or network connections. Additionally, if the manager asks the data scientist, they will emphasize the importance of accuracy in detecting attacks regarding the reason behind it. However, also additional challenge will arise here in establishing the trust and the explanation provided by machine learning models. So the security team will need to rely on this explanation to make well-informed decision and determine the appropriate course of action. And this highlights the critical aspect of explainability as it enables the team to understand the reason behind the machine learning alert and foster confidence in its output. So what is explainability in machine learning? We have referred to the definition of Arietta, given an audience, an explainable AI model produces details or reasons to make its functioning clear or easy to understand. And we have used the five main artifacts of explainability which were developed by Arietta in the data analysis chain. So the first one is uh, traceability, which is the ability to trace and understand uh, the data in the decision making process. Understandability is the characteristic of the model to make a human understand its function. Comprehensibility is the ability of uh, algorithm to represent its learned knowledge in human understandable way. Elucidation of user interface can provide a clear and understandable explanation for decision is for its user. And finally, interpretability, which is the ability of providing meaning for a model in terms understandable and shareable by a human. 
Now, one of the main artifacts that we have uh, focused on in our research is interface explainability, and it can enhance the transparency of complex model by providing insights into the decision making process. And specifically, we have focused on four different uh, interface explainability models, which are the feature importance, permutation feature importance, local interpretable model agnostic, and sharply adaptive explanations. Moreover, in our research, we have related the explanation of properties to the framework proposed by RPSL. So by considering these uh, explanation of properties, we were able to evaluate how well the explainability model fulfilled the whole requirements by providing robustness, faithfulness, performance, reliance and advance, and satisfaction of explanation. So as you can see that explanation robustness was closely connected to the concept of traceability by ensuring that similar inputs or variation in data do not result in drastic changes to the generated explanations. Uh, we can also see that explanation for faithfulness is tied to the attribute of understandability as it represents the ability of explanation to accurately reflect the true reasoning uh, process of the machine learning model. Uh, explanation performance is related to the concept of comprehensibility of the output and it refers to the assessment and measurement of the model ability to uh, accurately classify and predict the output. We also have the explanation reliance and the trust, which is linked to the interface explainability models and it determines the level of user confidence in the provided explanation. And lastly, we have the explanation goodness and satisfaction, which is concerned to the human interpretability, and it reflects the user perception of the clarity and understandability of the uh, explanation. So in addition to the explainability properties and the framework proposed by Arietta, we also saw that we have metrics of properties from the state of the art, and it can help us evaluate the effectiveness of explainability models. So what we did is that we related these metrics and properties to our framework to gain a comprehensive understanding of the different aspects of explainability and how they can quantitatively be measured. So in order to delve more on these metrics and properties, we have seen that stability can be related to the data because, uh, because the question here is that how stable are the explanations provided by a model when uh, there is a, a, a slight variation in the input. Uh, we also found another property which is consistency. Uh, it's about how similar the explanations are, uh, are derived when having similar machine learning uh, performance. Uh, the third property is performance. Uh, and it's about uh, how accurately can uh, the explanation predict the output of black box models. We also have a property called fidelity, uh, and it's about what feature help us in understanding these predictions. Uh, we also have the uh, reliability metric property, which uh, is uh, about uh, what which explainability model we can rely on. Efficiency also is a property, and it shows us uh, how the explanation uh, are generated in a time frame. And lastly, we have the clarity, and uh, we, we can see here how clear are the explanations for the data. So we also saw that we have uh, two different types uh, of metrics uh, to, to evaluate them. So the first one is the qualitative uh, measurement, and it can uh, show us a subject subjective assessment uh, here. Uh, as, a, as we see in the table, we have uh, different assessments uh, involved with evaluating the various types, uh, such as data, model type, explainability level, and explainability type, and also we provided the limitation of each interface explainability model. So for example, we can see that FI and PFI provide for us global explainability for the whole data, while LIME focuses on local level for specific instances, and CHAP can provide both a global and uh, local explanation. Moreover, the second type of metrics that uh, we have uh, seen is the quantitative metrics, and it's more about objective approaches. Uh, so here we prepared a table that highlights the key quantitative metrics that are existing with the corresponding links, links to the metrics properties uh, that we have uh, observed from the state of art according to the framework. And we saw that the performance property metrics can uh, be quantitatively evaluated by precision, 
recall accuracy of one score and CC and unbalanced uh, accuracy. Well, fidelity, uh, what fidelity property can be quantitatively uh, evaluated using uh, the feature important scores derived from FI, PFI, Lime, and Chuck. Uh, however, here we have seen also uh, that uh, matrix properties within the framework currently lack the quantitative measure for evaluating explainability. And this highlights the need for further research and the opportunity to propose a new quantitative metric that align with these properties. So in uh, our uh, work, uh, we have uh, defined a research question. So within the framework of explainability, what quantitative metric can be proposed to measure the explainability of machine learning model when detecting IoT cyber attack, considering the properties of explainability metrics? So in order to answer this research question, we have proposed the uh, different measurements for quantitatively uh, evaluating the matrix of properties. So the first one was the metric property, which is variability, where we defined the three uh, measurements, top K, correlation analysis, and distance analysis. The top K will measure how similar the top K most important feature are across interface explainability model. Uh, the correlation analysis will measure the similarity of uh, future scores, while the distance analysis will measure the difference between the future scores between these models. The second uh, uh, property metric that we, we wanted to have uh, to evaluate it quantitatively is the efficiency. And we developed the, the relative time cost here in order to plot a trade off between accuracy, explainability, and the performance time. And we have defined here the relative time cost as the measurements of uh, the time it takes for explanation uh, for cyber attack. And the main objective here is to the need for a quick explanation and the need for accurate and comprehensive explanation. Our third metric, yeah, property. Think, uh, just to mention, you, you still have uh, 15 minutes. Just be careful because we have a lot of slides. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the third property is stability, where we have proposed the entropy analysis uh, uh, in order to measure the uncertainty or randomness of explainability model when using two different data sets, sizes, or different uh, number of classes. And the fourth uh, uh, metric property of consistency, we developed a correlation analysis and to measure the similarity of the between similar machine learning performance. And the last uh, metric, which is the clarity, where we developed a clarity to score according to different contextual factors such as data, urgency, uh, experts, audience, and impact. And the main objective here is to measure how well the interpretability of a human by asking several questions according to several contextual factors. Now, in our methodology for evaluating the explainability of machine learning model, we involve going through different phases in the data analysis chain and assessing the explainability based on the framework we have established. So our objective here is to achieve quantitative measurements for each phase, enabling users to make informed choices regarding the best explainability model for specific needs. And we have also uh, utilized Jupyter Notebook from on Larry service uh, to perform the required analysis and we used uh, the BOT IoT dataset uh, from the Cybersecurity Research Group at the University of New South uh, Wales, uh, which has the information theft attack, which are the key logging and data exfiltration type of attack. So, for the initial step taken by any security team is to utilize the machine learning model and to detect the cyber attacks, which are for the information uh, theft, to see the performance. So an important question arises here, well, can the performance give explanation on the output behavior uh, by underlying the black box model? And to answer this question, we performed the experiment on different classification tasks. Uh, and we saw that XG boost had the best accuracy for uh, classifying the information theft attacks as uh, key logging or data exfiltration. And we also saw that CARD has the best accuracy when uh, having binary classification on the data exfiltration. And we also saw, saw that uh, overall the CARD uh, model have a strict balance between accuracy and the computational time for multi-classification and binary classification. And in order to understand better the explanation performance, we use traditional visualization like computation metrics 
specification report CPE, ROC, and PRC in order to see how the attacks can differ between data exfiltration and key logging in their performance. So, as we said, that uh, CART has a good balance between accuracy and computational tools, and also the visualization helps us graphical uh, representation for the model performance. Uh, however, a new challenge uh, that uh, needs to be discovered is that the security team needs to understand the reason behind this classification. And this is why we need to apply the interface explainability. So for the second step is to apply this interest uh, uh, explainability model and see which can feature uh, score play a significant role in the detection of process. So for that, we have applied different interface explainability model and we saw the important features applied for, this, for all the except, uh, for all the machine learning models such as MLP, uh, XGBoost, Art, and uh, and Random Forest. And here we can see the visualization of these future important scores. So we can see that uh, the interface explainability model, uh, uh, which is FY, showed us uh, the proto for uh, for the most important feature. While in uh, P uh, in uh, PFI, we saw the transmitted packets, which indicates uh, a data exfiltration. Uh, Lime also show us the key logging and not key logging uh, values and the important features. And lastly, here we can see that SHAP also provide us with the feature important and with the impact of each cyber attack uh, for each feature. Uh, and for that reason, we can see that uh, different interface explainability model has shown different important features. And this will lead uh, to the confusion of uh, the security team because they need to, uh, to compare and understand the differences and similarities between this explainability model in order to have more confidence on the explainability model they will choose. So we come to the third uh, phase here where uh, we want to rely on this explanation to be correct when using different explainability models. And for, for now, we have applied uh, the top K for reliability and where we can see here that uh, uh, SHAP and PFI has shown the best uh, common features, top K an important feature for having K, uh, top three, top five, and top 10 uh, for multi-classification. Uh, we also applied the correlation analysis to, to see uh, the similarity between all the feature scores, and we saw that SHAP and FI had the most similar feature scores. Uh, we also applied the distance analysis to see the difference uh, between the feature, uh, uh, different uh, feature score for a specific explainability models. And as you can see here, that SHAP has the less different values between all the explainability models. So as a result here, we saw that SHAP demonstrated better similarity and less uh, diversion compared to other models. And now we want to see how quick are the explanation. So for that reason, we went to the efficiency metric in order to see if the explainability model can produce explanations that are understandable within the time frame. And we here we saw that 3D plot where we can see that the FI interface explainability model was quicker in generating the explanation for exit value classifier. Uh, and uh, the, the new challenge here is to see the stability of data for each explainability model. Uh, for that reason, we went to the step of, uh, of data in order to apply the entropy analysis for how well the explanation handled the variation in the entropy data while maintaining stability. So as you can see here, we have applied the entropy analysis to see the stability and we saw that uh, PFI was more stable in changing uh, the size of the data and the number of classes. So it has the less uh, uh, value of stability here. Uh, and uh, the last thing that uh, the, the the last thing that we need to see is the machine how how the explanation difference between similar machine learning models performance. Uh, so for that reason, we went to the uh, model phase where we have applied correlation analysis to see the similarity performance between the machine learning models. And we saw that uh, by applying correlation analysis for consistency, uh, FI has shown better consistency between XJBoost and uh, PART because XJBoost and PART had similar performance before, and we wanted to see if they have also similar explanation. 
Uh, and for the last uh, step is uh, the clarity uh, metric uh, in order to see how the humans will have good explanation. So la the last step was to see how satisfied are the humans with the clarity and explanation uh, provided by various explainability models. So we can see here that uh, we have a dashboard with uh, several uh, questions according to different uh, contextual factor, and we can see also the visualization of the credit score, where we have seen that CHAP had uh, the best credit score according to the different phases of, uh, of our framework. Uh, so as a conclusion, uh, our research uh, quantitatively measured explainability within the framework to achieve a trust and confidence throughout the data analysis chain. Uh, and we have also provide the uh, interpretable insights in uh, understanding and detecting the IoT cyber attacks. And for the future work, we are applying it on several IoT data sets. And we, are, we, we need to extend uh, this explainability framework from machine learning to graph learning. Uh, and thank you, and uh, I'm ready to hear your question. Thanks a lot. Question? Yeah, the, the, the mail address is not epitap.com, it's epitap.fr. Okay. You should use it sometime. <laughs> I'm not going to be talking for connecting to the city. Uh, I have one question. Uh, you you, 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 you took the relation of clarity. Uh, I mean, wh why do you get this one? You have no information about methodology or pool of users or anything? Uh, sorry, Pierre, I didn't uh, understand your question. Here. What, what is that? What, what does this come from? What is the methodology? Who developed the application? Who developed the who platform? The uh, uh, I, I have uh, developed this dashboard with the clarity score. Uh, so the question here are from the data analysis phases that we have done. So it's according to the stability, consistency, and also to the data, uh, like uh, the contextual factor of data, impact, urgency, and uh, the experts and the audience. So I, I have, uh, clarity, you present clarity at the metric that expresses the uh, quality of the information provided for the users, but I mean, this is very new. You have no time to ask any user. So, who, who answered the the survey? Uh, it's me. <laughs> I have answered the survey according to the uh, to what we have seen from the measurements that we have proposed before. Uh, we saw stability measurement. I I saw it. And anyone can see it. We saw the consistency score, and this is why we need the quantitative scores here, because the quantitative score can answer the questions. And when we have these scores, anyone can see them. So experts can see them, audience can see them, and we can answer this question for a human by the dashboard that we provide. Uh, you, you should probably make an example to 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 highlight uh, what how it's working for PFI, it's just missing here a bit of a warning example. So yeah, for this example, I consider that understanding is consistent because of that. Because otherwise you just evaluate yourself, your own work. So, I yeah, mean... Maybe <laughs> for other people to see the scores and the questions. Yeah. Cool. Then, then, then I that you, uh, you, you could evaluate your metrics uh, with regard to the... Uh, to, to, uh, to the exploitation phase of the attack in, in which, uh, so with the data exfiltration and killing. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what are the differences between, between the uh, explainability capabilities for this uh, attacks with regard to what you had before, like those and scans for more broadband issues? I didn't uh, understand. Yeah, you have you, evaluated your metrics with uh, for for focused data on key learning on data exfiltration. 
before you have evaluated them on um, you have evaluated them on um, so more broadband attacks like scans, so the exploration phase, very early phase of the of the kill chain. Uh, what is the difference? So for the phases, it's uh, a stable framework. So there is no uh, changes in the framework for specific attacks. But uh, the changes that you will realize is first on the performance explanation, and secondly on the fidelity of the explanation. Because yeah. can be much more specific. Which which are the difference in performance? For the phases, it's the same. But for the quantitative scores, you will realize the differences in the performance and on the fidelity. Yeah, but uh, what, what, what is the, the, the performance uh, for the two, two cases? You said there's a difference, but what, what, what are the numbers? Yeah, it's so good. It's here. Yeah, this uh, this uh, yeah, this is for um, this is for that exfiltration clearly. And what what what, 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 what are the uh, what are the performance for scans for the for the same? How how, how does it behave from for scan? Yeah, yeah but I don't have them here in the PowerPoint, but I have them in the paper. So if, if someone needs to to know more about the cyber attacks, we can refer to the paper that we will publish. But here it's more a use case on this information cyber attack. But of course and, there is a and, and what about fidelity? So, so, so because uh, for example, data exfiltration, you will notice uh, high transmitted packets, right? Because uh, you are sending a lot of packets. So here for the fidelity, you will notice that uh, the most important uh, 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 feature will be the transmitted packets from a destination port. But for example, if you are doing DOS attack, you will notice different feature importance because DOS, for example, it's about uh, floating or source IP to destination IP. So different features, you will have important features, but for different uh, type of attacks. So this is what's the difference between them. But do, do, you, do, do you differentiate that are implied by the fact that if you take Kilovic, for instance, they, say they are very rare, very rare attacks. So it's, uh, you have more unbalanced uh, traffic. It's uh, very more loud uh, uh, traffic. So the distribution is very different to what you have when you have scans, for instance, which uh, which have ten or hundred more traffic. Do you, do, you, do you see a difference in the in the explainability for for these two type of data distributions? Um, for the performance, yes, you will see a difference. For the explainability model, it depends on what we're using. For example, SHA uh, showed us uh, differences. For example, here in FI, for example, you will not see the feature importance of transmitted packet. And this is why the users will not be able to rely on FI. And this is why we need the quantitative scores. So it's very important to continue with the other phases to see if we can rely on the trust these feature importance scores from different explainability models. So it, it, uh, it depends on the use case we're doing, on the attack type, type we are having. And this is why it's important to go through the framework for explainability and not to focus on just one thing. Cool, very, very nice program. Uh, questions? Okay, 